let me put to bed two notions. The first is the irony that I literally went to bat for Mark Wade and Dan Slott in my last two videos, offering alternatives for their behavior. But then their recent tantrums on Twitter and YouTube show their true motivations are all about illusions of persuasion and vestiges of power. The second notion is the idea that's what's happening to the Magic the Card game community. It's unconnected to the infestation of SJWs in Marvel and comics in general. Well, guess what? It is connected, as it's part of the exact same culture war being currently waged on comic books. And even further, it's been going on inside, inside, it's been going on inside the Magic the Gathering community for longer than it was in comics. Diversity in comics puts patient zero for SJW comics at around 2015, with pre-tremors occurring in late 2014. Let me tell you, SJWs had completely taken over by the Theros block in 2013. And I remember knowing something was happening to my beloved card game since Innistrad. But Theros is where everything came full bore. This is where the illusionary number of 40% magic players being female was born. A number that any visit to any shop would utterly dismiss. But then another statistic came out. Females make up 1-3% to of the professional scene or the pro tour scene. Which actually doesn't mean professional, it really means promotional. But they make 1-3% to of the pro tour scene. Why is this number not even close to being proportional? Most people say, well, that Trajan, the 40% number really represents casual players. We know there are a lot more casual players than, than uh, quote-unquote pro players. But I don't think that's the case. My other question is, why did Mark Rosewater, the head of Magic Research and Development, release this clearly marketing number? They never released any marketing data before this. All they would say is they would give a round number of the Magic players in general. They would never release any specific demographic information. So why did this happen when it did? I think I have a reason. I think it's about power. It's always about power. Come on, guys. It's power for you, power for your group. Rosewater released the number at a time when there was a massive, significant push to try to get women into the game, which there's nothing wrong with. I think it's inherently a good thing. More people playing the game fosters a bigger community. Usually means that you can get more games in with other people. Magic as it is, is a very niche. It's, it's a big niche, but it's still a very niche thing. People, there's still a shame around Magic the Gathering. So if we were going to have more players, especially more female players, get more people out there, I think it would be a great, fantastic thing. So I do think that getting more women into the game is great. However, the way they were doing this was in classic progressive fashion. Forum posts about toxic masculinity, podcasts, articles were everywhere. And I know this because I was really inundated into the Magic the Gathering community at the time. I, I, I did a lot of creative stuff with it too. So I was, I was, I was, in, I was wedged in there. But I stopped playing a little bit after this because, to me, Magic, a game about slinging spells in a basement of a store, became politicized. Who wants to play with that? It really sank in when Jeremy from Unsleeved Media was deemed an outsider by the community. And I use the word community in quotes because it really turned from a community to a mob. And he was ousted from posting spoilers of upcoming sets, getting exclusive interviews, and just in general, was, he was deemed an untouchable he was basically deemed the Ethan Van uh, Skyver of Magic. Now, here's the thing, though. Unlike Ethan Van Skyver, who I actually love and I love his art, I actually hate Jeremy. I don't like him. I don't like his channel. I think he's super lame and relies on way too much clickbait. I think he, he's really trying to be Sargon of Akkad and not trying to be Jeremy. He's just some Midwest Republican. That's really, like, that's really all he is. But he, I don't know, I, I, just, I don't like him. I'm not a fan of his. But... Him being ousted and the kind of mob that went after him was a clear indicator that extremist progressives had successfully taken over at this point. It's over. It's done. There's no going back. And guess what happened? Sales are plummeting. Former estimates of 20 million players have dropped to 12 million. People are criticizing Magic's reliance on lottery cards. Lottery cards are gimmick reprints of old expensive cards that are used that are slipped into, into packs randomly to try to generate more pack sales. Uh, Wizards of the Coast, the publisher of Magic, blackballs certain publications and content creators while favoring others. Does any of this sound familiar? It, it should, because the exact same thing is happening in comics. Almost exactly. Except Magic fucked up even further by giving big box stores even deeper discounts on packs, allowing them to sell them at a cheaper rate than LGSs, which we'll get to in a moment. I, I don't think Magic the Gathering will ever truly die. It's too synonymous with geekdom, and it's really the go-to game for uh, anyone with antisocial personality disorder. Uh, but I do fear that uh, the progressive extremism infecting the community will result in local comic and game shops dying. Uh, no one wants to hang out with these progressives except other progressives. Their entire social model is to either eliminate or forcibly convert 
wrong thinkers by bullying them until their social circles are made in their image. And that's a horrible environment to want to go spend money at. And that's aside from the fact that no one's going to go, go and want to spend four hours at a tournament, which let me tell you, and anybody who's been at a tournament knows three of those hours are downtime of you sitting there not doing shit. So you have to, you're talking to people. You want to really be talking to, be talking to these people for three hours while they, you have this hanging over your head and they're just waiting. They're waiting to jump on you without any outrage. This is all it's about. It's about outrage. These people are in the business of outrage. Why? Because it gives them power. They jump on people and shame them to give themselves more power. It's all about power. It's only going to be about power. Don't let them fool you into thinking it's some sort of moral battle they're fighting. It's not. It's about protecting their social capital. At least if they were honest about it, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't be so upset about it. But it's not. They're very disingenuous. It's about maintaining the power that they have socially. It's not even, it's not about the, this is what kills me. It's not about the game. It's not about the game. It's not about magic. It's not about Warhammer. It's not about comics. It's not about video games. It's about their position in these communities. That's all it's about. And it's destroying the things that we love. It's destroying the games. It's destroying the tabletop. It's destroying everything. That's it, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. You could watch. You could you could watch me. You could find me at Trajan Channel on Twitter. Uh, I haven't just an update for anybody. I have, the reason I haven't made a video in three weeks because I got a promotion at my real job. So uh, I had to like I would just I had to stay late the last like three weeks just to uh, help with the transition team and everything. So because I hired my um, replacement for my old job, so I had to deal with that. So anyway, uh I'm going to the comic shop tonight. I'll catch you guys later.